Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another FUSAP hosted webinar. Human resources on the entire state of Delaware the science, technology, and innovations. I'll start. My name is Paige Kronzak, and I will be hosting this webinar featuring New York State's Centers of Excellence in Digital Game Development. In this webinar, we will explore commercially successful and groundbreaking advances in digital gaming made possible by these resources. You will hear from three centers and learn how they are facilitating collaboration between industry, academia, and individuals. You will become familiar with the ways in which they provide resources and mentorship to those entering the industry, assist established companies and developers, and grow the overall size of the New York State games industry and community. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce you to FuseHub, the New York Manufacturing Extension Partnership Center, also known as New York MEP. We are supported by Empire State Development's Division of Science, Technology, and Innovation. New York MEP is a part of the National MEP Network funded by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, dedicated to helping small and mid-sized manufacturers with competitiveness and innovation. As you can see here, our mission is to provide New York State manufacturers with guided access to our extensive network of industry experts and programs to solve productivity, commercialization, research and development issues, and other challenges to growth. Some key elements of our work include increasing awareness of the expertise and capabilities available to companies throughout the state, leveraging in-house and partner expertise to assess company needs, connect them with capable resources, and track and monitor follow-up. We use a unique mix of technology, resources, manufacturing expertise, and special events to assist manufacturers. We also coordinate statewide projects and other strategic initiatives guided by New York State and the needs of small to medium-sized enterprises. Here are our panelists. Myself, Paige Fronzak, Amanda Kirk of the Tech Valley Digital Gaming Hub, Robert Mostyn of the RIT Magic Center, and Dylan McKenzie of the NYU Games Hub. In each of the three presentations, you will receive an overview of the center and its expertise, success stories from the center, and how to get in touch with them. At the very end of the webinar, there will be a 10-minute Q&A session. I welcome you to submit your questions at any time via the GoToWebinar control panel. I now welcome our first panelist, Amanda Kirk. Hi, thanks Paige. Uh, my name is Amanda Kirk and I am the Digital Game Hub Coordinator for Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Uh, so we're a small research institution located in Troy, New York, and we've been partnering with our local community in the field of game development. Uh, advance. Great. Uh, so um, our approach has really had five main pillars. Uh, we've been doing um, a lot of different things to improve game development in our region. Um, we started with doing some uh, regional and industry promotion. Um, we've been partnering with uh, the Center for Economic Growth and other uh, agencies to try to inform um, the public about uh, game development in our region and how it's important um, as part of um, New York State's economy. Um, we've been involved uh, with um, a bunch of the um, legislation, et cetera. Um, we have attended a bunch of uh, trade shows, including the Montreal, Montreal International Game Summit, uh, the Game Developers Conference, which is in San Francisco. Uh, we've also locally attended Senator Golden's Tech Expo for the past uh, few years, where um, we can share with our local legislators, um, you know, how there is uh, already a growing industry of game development in our area, and it's not just fun and games. Um, we also have a bunch of community partnerships that we've been doing, um, just strategically working with uh, stakeholders in the area to try to improve game development. Uh, we have um, helped we have worked with uh, the Tech Valley Game Space to develop a diversity incubator uh, focused on um, specifically on women, um, teaching them how to make games. Uh, we've done, uh, they've done a prototype pitching contest uh, to try to um, get more um, 
like entrepreneurial people making games. Uh, we partnered with uh, the Tech Valley Center of Gravity to do a, a variety of hackathons. And uh, they also put on a uh, digital games roundtable uh, along with the Alliance for the Creative Economy. So that was an event with a series of panels featuring uh, local developers um, discussing with the public the importance and impact of uh, the game development community. We also have uh, done some focus working with uh, youth programming. Uh, specifically, we've um, partnered with the Games and Education Symposium to put on the Teen Game Workshop, which was a, uh, a free week-long program for high school students to teach them about um, the industry uh, with um, local uh, people within the field able to mentor them and discuss things. Uh, so that has been very successful. Uh, our third pillar has been the reveal program, which we've been doing for the past three years, um, well, involving uh, game development companies for the past three years. It's a seven week entrepreneurial program uh, for new businesses. Uh, so we would have uh, them come in with a game idea and they would uh, work with local um, this, like local entrepreneurs and um, other people who would uh, help them uh, create a successful business plan and um, teach them about how to market their game ideas and how to make it uh, like a marketable um, complete business. Uh, we also have done uh, game jams, which are uh, like a short time frame. Uh, event where people will come together of varying skill levels and work together to create games. Uh, this can be really useful if um, there are small studios that are looking to um, try new things or if you're just if people are just getting started or may not know may not have uh, the time to invest in a you know one specific idea they can come to a game jam and they can learn um, a variety of different tools. Uh, we also host a series of local events. Uh, we have the uh, annual Game Fest, which is a uh, student game competition um, that we're hoping to expand this year. Um, it will be April 27th. Uh, we have the Games and Simulation Speaker Series, where we bring in um, speakers from around the country to talk about game development, and that is open to the public. And we also have been partnering with uh, the ECAC for Hudson Valley GamerCon, which is the end of this month. Advance. Great, yes. So um, those are the types of things that we have done uh, the past few years. Uh, and one story of success we wanted to share was uh, Dang, which is a small studio um, that uh, founded recently and is currently living in Cahos, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump from Troy. They're working on their first, first major title uh, called IO Interloper. Uh, so they started, uh, they were all RPI students, uh, and they uh, started working together as a small team and wanted to continue and actually form a company. Um, they were nominated for Best Student Game for the IGF in 2018, and that is the Independent Games Festival, which um, has the rewards at GDC every year. Uh, they then attended uh, the 2017 Reveal Incubator program. Um, I believe they had a different project that they were working on, but that allowed them to learn about how to become marketable and uh, what next steps they wanted to take. Uh, so then they started working on IO Interloper, uh, which was awarded first place at Game Fest in 2018. Um, they were nominated for the best student game uh, for the E3 college game competition, um, which allowed them to go out to E3 in LA and showcase their game to hundreds of thousands of press and publishers. Um, and they've had successful meetings thanks to that. Um, and following that, they were a selection for the Indie Festival in 2018. So what's really wonderful is that they have chosen to stay in our region and they're um, support, you know, they're able to get support from local developers and the local ecosystem and um, work to find ways to make their, their very, I mean, their very exciting game um, come to market. Advance. So that's all for me. Um, again, you can reach me at um, kirka3 at rpi.edu if you have any questions. Uh, you can check out our website 
website, gamehub.rpi.edu, and we also have a Twitter. Um, we definitely would love to hear from you, and any way that we can work together would be terrific. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. We have Robert Mostyn from Magic Spell Studios. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rob. I am the Digital Games Hub Coordinator uh, at Magic Spell Studios. So MAGIC is an acronym standing for Media Arts, Games, Interaction, and Creativity. Um, and that kind of uh, covers the broad sense of everything we like to do here uh, at MAGIC. Next slide. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our facility here. We just opened um, a brand new facility uh, this past October. Uh, we're really excited about it. Um, so it is a 52,000 square foot. Um, one of a kind facility in the Northeast. Um, it has a 7,000 square foot soundstage. Um, that's a magic number for us because uh, that enables us, or excuse me, that enables any production shot on the soundstage to be uh, eligible for the New York State uh, Film Tax Credit. Um, it has a 180 seat movie theater with 4K projection and Dolby Atmos sound system, um, both 2D and 3D animation labs as well as AR and VR labs, um, color correction and sound mixing theaters, um, and then game development uh, labs and classrooms. Um, and I mentioned that you probably noticed there's a lot of uh, kind of film related um, things in this facility. Um, and that's um, because the intention behind this building, one of the intentions was to grow two of our most popular programs here at RIT, um, the School of Film and Animation, as well as the uh, School of Interactive Games and Media. So much of the facility is meant to support those two programs. Um, the, the labs and facilities, uh, while hosting classrooms or hosting classes, also um, are open labs and students can come here and work from both of those programs. However, it is a multidisciplinary facility, so it isn't under one school here at RIT. Um, we are meant to be uh, have our doors open for anybody who wants to work uh, on a passion project that is a student or faculty. Um, and we kind of have five pillars um, that we that we work on. Um, obviously, I mentioned grow the schools of film and animation uh, and interactive games and media. Um, and we're also supporting faculty research. So we have affiliated faculty with us who are either working on funded research or working on their own projects. And um, they'll work in-house with us and we'll also have students that support them. Um, one example is we had a, a professor who was working on a board game um, and had students working on it with him uh, through funding. Uh, we are also supporting uh, entrepreneurship. So we, we get a lot of students who have games that they've been working on um, sort of as passion projects uh, and they get to the point where they're ready to publish or looking to market uh, and we help them with that. So the building is called the Magic Center, but part of that is also Magic Spell Studios, which um, is an LLC. Um, and the goal of that is producing and publishing both our student and faculty work uh, in digital media. So we want to help help them with that second part of production, kind of getting it out to uh, the people and everything. Um, and that kind of rolls into commercialism. We want to help students to sell their things, uh, mentor them in that process and kind of uh, help them get into the market, um, especially as they graduate and form their own companies. Um, and lastly, the last pillar of, of this new facility is a campus uh, showcase. If you ever have the opportunity to walk through the building, you'll notice there's a ton of glass in it. And that is very intentional in that we want to showcase everything that everyone's working on here. Um, one of the things you'll see sometimes with RIT is we're doing really cool things, but they're in the basement or they're in the center of a building that can be hard to, to see or to get at. Um, so we really want to be a campus showcase for everything that's going on um, here at RIT as well as in the community. Um, one of the programs we do is called the RIT Co-op Program. Um, so RIT has a co-op program where students are required to do two co-ops uh, and they are paid internships uh, and they typically do them nationally uh, across the country at various companies. But we have our own internal program called Co-Up, where we have funds provided by a trustee, and we essentially hire student groups to work on their own passion project for a whole semester, and they get paid for it. So right now, in-house, we have five teams. Uh, four of those are teams working on video games. 
Uh, one of them is a, a solo um, person, student rather, working on a comic. Um, so they are, a uh, majority of them are working full time on these projects, uh, not taking classes and getting paid for it. And then some of them are working part time. Um, and we really, the reason we do this is we see this uh, program really help students get a sense of how to develop something, how to see it through the process, as well as help them develop uh, their own companies out of that, have something to show for uh, show for sale or show for for the industry. Um, now, in, in regards to uh, ways we support the local community, ways we support the local industry, uh, one of the things we do is we host uh, the Rock Game Dev events. Uh, Rock Game Dev is a local nonprofit that runs uh, workshops and meetups and socials, uh, events for local game developers. These events are open to the public, open to all ages, all levels of experience, and Magic really wants to be part of, of just supporting that local community, that local industry. Uh, some of the other things we've done is partner with the Strong National Museum of Play. They are a local um, uh, a museum that houses uh, toys and games. Um, they also house the International Center for the History of Electronic Games, which has a huge national draw. Um, and then we also partner with our local studios. Uh, and we work with all these really to, to just support the industry to kind of get push that narrative that uh, Rochester is making games. Um, one of the newest things we just started uh, working on, and I apologize, it's not on a slide, we just started working on this last week, is what we're calling the Digital Games Industry Association of Rochester. And this is basically acting as a, um, a group that the city can, can talk to directly in regards to uh, promoting the local industry. So it's one way we're kind of working directly with the city um, and kind of can talk to them um, pretty immediately. Next slide, please. So the success story I wanted to touch base on is um, uh, a group called Esthetician Labs. Uh, so Esthetician uh, is a student group, um, excuse me, a student LLC, and they recently released a game called Crazy Plates on both Android and iOS. Uh, Crazy Plates is a high-speed arcade game where you're tasked with delivering as many garbage plates as you can before you run out of gas. For those of you unfamiliar with the garbage plate, it is a local Rochester delicacy. It consists of hamburgers, home fries, um, hot dogs sometimes, mac salad. Um, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, we're very proud of them here in Rochester. But uh, at, we um, had a game jam here in summer of 2017, and they developed this game in about 48 hours um, and continued to develop it uh, after that because they uh, really enjoyed what they came out with. Um, they placed first in the student category in the New York State Game Dev Challenge back in uh, May of 2018. Um, so they gained some funds from that to continue development, and from there they were part of our fall 2018 uh, Magic Co-op program that I mentioned previously. And at that point, they were really looking to uh, publish and and get their game out um, um, to the masses, uh, uh, to the market, and that's where we kind of came in and helped them. Uh, they released in December of 2018, and they were ranked number 12 on top paid arcade games on the Google Play Store. Um, and since then, they have gone on to pick up client work uh, and contract work uh, while still uh, attending RIT full time. So this is this is one of the things we like to see, um, and we're trying to help with. Um, in, in talking with uh, esthetician, they are very dead set on on remaining in Rochester and really uh, forming the studio and building the studio out. Um, they're doing the model of doing client work. Um, while working on their own IPs. They are currently working on their own new game, um, but they're doing client work um, and contract work to support that. Next slide, please. So here we have a video uh, of our grand opening, which will start shortly. The theme that you're gonna see prominently featured throughout the building is that we learn by making things. So first and foremost, this is a hands-on space designed to support 
and accelerate the creative and innovative talents of our students and faculty. We have created in MAGIC a uniquely RIT environment that will support and accelerate the convergence of the disciplines that are represented, fueled by the university's inherent culture of creativity and innovation. This is really a game changer. We can say you can get a world-class education at RIT, work with geniuses, and stay here and incubate your idea in this very building. And we will make sure that the rest of the world knows that when you're a smart young person, this is where you want to come to be part of a cutting-edge industry. My favorite thing about RIT is that it's a university full of opportunities. No matter what you want to do, there's a way to do it. With this new building, Magic's resources are more accessible to students than ever before. If you have a project you're working on, something you'd like to start, or you're creatively driven and looking for like-minded peers, come join us. That's a wrap. Great, next slide. So that about covers it. Uh, feel free to reach out to me at rob at magic.rit.eu. Um, you can also contact Magic on Twitter uh, at RIT Magic or visit our website magic.rit.edu. But happy to talk about uh, local industry here in Rochester. Um, very excited to be part of this. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. My name is Dylan McKenzie. I'm the director of the NYU Game Center, and I run our NYC Games Hub along with Tony Pizza and other faculty and staff here at the New York University Department of Game Design. And so I'll share just very briefly what we do here at the NYC Games Hub and highlight a few things that we're especially proud of and then answer your questions. Next slide. So our location is many things to many folks. So I've summed it up as these three things here is community expertise and production support. So community, the hub are, is a physical space where people make games. We bring people with common goals and varied skill sets together and we help them find mutual benefit. And uh, this is primarily accomplished through weekly free and open to the public events. We do lectures and workshops and job fairs. So uh, as an example, earlier this month, a couple weeks ago, uh, Jinova Chen came to speak in our lecture series, and he was the major creative force behind games like Flower and Journey, uh, founded a studio called That Game Company in California. And these games have really dramatically changed the, the landscape of what games can be in the last decade, both commercially and artistically successful. And we bring folks like him into our community so that our students and, and people in our community can learn from the best. And, and spend time with like-minded people. Uh, expertise is also important to us. So as a university, a major component of our value is concentrating knowledge in, in one place. So uh, games are still a new media, and, and one of our capabilities is helping people understand how to make sense of games. So through our faculty and through our Hub Advisory Board, we advise policymakers and entrepreneurs and the press, people to just write us emails, and uh, and so, for example, that last year, a curator from London's Victoria and Albert Museum came to New York City with uh, with a small team, and she visited with our faculty and just to get some perspective on what uh, making games here in the states and specifically in New York was was like. And as a result of that trip, um, New York City and and NYU in particular had a really important presence in this very very large show one of the, the the largest shows at one of the oldest institutions for games in the world and we felt that, that was a really significant step towards raising the profile of our state as a place to to make games and 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 for our hub as being a place where people can go to to ask questions and to learn and to make sense of them and more concretely we also provide production support so our our overall strategy for raising the profile of the industry and growing jobs in the state is, is really best captured. And this idea is that we support entrepreneurship in games. And 
so games are are hit driven like like movies or, or music and that means that when a game succeeds which is quite rare uh, the effects can be really significant so an example would be a company called mojang which was started as two gentlemen in sweden making a game that didn't really look or play like any other games and that game is minecraft which is a worldwide phenomena and they sold that to microsoft for 2.5 billion dollars in 2014. so our strategy is, is it's not trying to replicate Minecraft, but we do take the lesson that supporting smart people with unique ideas um, who don't have resources otherwise to work on their projects is one potential path to success. And we like this because we think that folks who start companies in New York are more likely to stay here. Um, they're more likely to hire graduates from our colleges and they're more likely to give back to their communities. And so that our, our to sum this, uh, what we do up, we think that by building a, a welcoming, and diverse community of creators, filling that space with smart people who are willing to help each other, and then giving them resources to make games and start companies, we can increase the likelihood that New York State will be the home to the next Minecraft or the next uh, Fortnite or whatever the next thing is. Next slide. So the incubator is the most direct contribution to that overall goal. And I'm cheating a little bit here because I'm gonna tell you about four projects, but they're all part of the same program and they tell the same story. So the incubator is a three month program over the summer that gives um, developers, both students and, and members of the public, uh, anyone can apply time and space, guidance and resources so they can launch their games and start studios and ideally um, gain a, a measure of financial independence. So here's some four examples of, of companies that have come to the incubator uh, and from the hub more broadly. So on the, the top right corner there, you see Big Glitch. So, this game imagines a world where computers are are actually magic and uh, you're a witch and it's it's cute it's fun it's stylish and the developers have probably the success with this game into their next project which they got significant funding for and one of the developers uh jenny was recently featured in that uh exhibit for games called play design disrupt at the vna museum in london that i, I meant, mentioned earlier underneath that is a game called norwood suite and this was uh, a game Sort of about New York, about the Hudson Valley uh, area by someone who had a successful career in music and then transitioned that career into a creative practice in games. The Norwood Suite was published by a New York State based publisher, uh, Alliance Digital Media, and they were successful enough where um, the person, Cosmo D, making the game is able to work on his next, uh, his next title right now. Next to that is Rewardable, and this is a non digital game off of the computer and uh, basically what they did is they fixed Scrabble uh, which is harder to do than you might think. Um, it was published by Penguin Random House and uh, you can get this in Amazon and in bookstores and also in, in airports in the Hudson News which I find funny. Um, and then in the top left corner is Ape Out and this game is coming out on Thursday. Uh, we uh, have uh, we're really hopeful about the success of this project. It was published by a company called Devolver Digital, which has a very good reputation in the indie games industry. Uh, Apeout went through our incubator. He's continued to work on the floor here in collaboration with some of our faculty. And it's going to be on the Nintendo Switch and on computers as of Thursday. So um, keep your eye on uh, Ape coming out. Next slide. Uh, this is a short video about the 2017 incubator, just to give you a sense of uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, so you can start at page. This is shot by some graduates of the NYU film department who are also starting a company, um, a film production company. The goal of the incubator is to get games out into the world commercially. We're not really telling the, the developers how they need to spend their time. We're saying that what your goal should be to launch this game. We're going to give you some tools to do that. And then when they come in every day, they are working on figuring out how to launch their games. We had some really cool like local multiplayer games. We had puzzle games. We look around and we say, well, what, what projects are interesting? And do we have the resources? Do we have the expertise? Do you have a game that's ready for this kind of program? The incubator has definitely been a, a really nice kind of fine-tuned experience to kind of have um, feedback and interaction with various people in the games community. It's allowed us a lot of focus. We didn't really have a whole big picture idea, and I think the incubator has been really good for helping us figure that out. It gives us a chance to, you know, take one step back and see whether 
our game is already in the you know like in the right direction or not. There is something nice about just being in a workspace with a bunch of other people who are who are creating something. It's so great to just be able to turn to the person next to you and say, hey, what do you think about this? Or you need somebody to play, play characters for trailer footage, which is <laughs> always helpful. Everyone's kind of with each other in their whole process of where they are in like marketing or gameplay or like what their vision is. I would say it's more like a family, I would say, during mm -hmm. the time. The advisory board is a group of industry professionals who've been working in games for years. We've got um, experienced developers and designers, we've got uh, people who are familiar with marketing and legal. We take a lot of pride in sort of doing everything ourselves when it comes to the games development, but it's sort of a lonely road. So just to know that there are people supporting us and willing to answer all these difficult questions and help us, you know, ask these ourselves too, um, that's a really good feeling. And all these advisors have a lot of investment in like seeing these projects do well. And so it's also really interesting seeing professionals from all over the games industry and kind of give what they think that your game should need. And feedback that is well informed and, you know, understands the, the types of things that you're dealing with. There's nobody better at pulling off the band-aid for you than people that have uh, had to do it themselves. For us, it would be a lot of sort of guessing in the dark and, or hypotheticals. They're able to sort of give us more concrete data and, and feedback. Really, it's the, the people I've talked to and really helped me kind of figure out the business end of my game. Every major award for games, one of the Incubator Project has been, has been a part of that. I think actually what's most impressive about our crew this year is they're sometimes here before I am. Teams are working very hard. They've accomplished a tremendous amount individually and, and collectively in terms of making work, publishing it, getting it out there. The program is, is working and is successful, which is just you know super gratifying, exciting to see. The main reason people should be excited about these games is they're new. You know, they're not the work you're seeing out there every day, and you can come to the events and meet the developers. I think that's a really unique opportunity. The there's going to be a public showcase on uh, Friday, September 8th and it's gonna be right here in the Game Center, and so it's an opportunity for the public to come in and see, before anyone else has an opportunity to play these games, what's coming out of the incubator, what's coming out of the Game Center, and, um, and, and have some fun doing it. Okay, so if you, uh, you can go to the next slide page. So if you like what you see there, we encourage you to um, come visit us or to contact us. Uh, on the left, you'll see that link there, Game Center, NYU Follow. Uh, we're on most of the social media. Our mailing list is put together by Gwena, and it's really, really excellent. We send something out every Monday. <clears throat> so if you're interested, get in touch. Uh, we're at NYU Game Center on, on most social media. You can also write to that email address, and we are happy to uh, do what we can for you. Thanks, Thanks, Dylan. We hope that you've enjoyed the presentations, and we'll now begin the Q&A portion of the presentation and answer some questions that you have submitted. The first question is for Dylan. What is the financial relationship to the teams in your incubation? Do you take any equity, revenue share, or anything? Uh, so we've experimented with this model over time. Uh, this is going to be, this year will be the sixth time we've run the, the incubator, but uh, one of the constants is that we don't do equity. Um, there's a longer answer there, but the, the short version is that we want, this program is meant to support the students, uh, or uh, not just the students, it's meant to support the developers, and not really benefit the the university. If we get a, a Minecraft and we make 2.5 billion dollars, then then great. That money will go back and we'll be able to support projects in the future. Um, but we want the students, the developers, to learn how to launch a game. We want there to be some real stakes, and so this isn't just a, a an academic exercise. This is really launching a studio, and it really matters. Um, but we don't want to have something where we are part of their company for the future. Um, and we don't want to take a really uh, large cut. So right now the deal is that if you make more than $10,000 in a calendar year, you keep the first 10 and then we revenue share 10% from that. And we find that that's, uh, that's much more generous than you're going to get on average in the industry, but it's still a, a real number. 
and uh, we're able to capture the upside of some some of our more successful projects. And um, but it's without really um, putting the brakes on any anyone's uh, future success. So um, we've tried a lot of things, and I have lots of thoughts about that if you're if you're curious. But the short answer is is over ten thousand. Keep the first ten, and we'll revenue share ten percent. That's awesome. All right, so the next question is for Robert. What unique assets are you leveraging to help grow the games industry? Absolutely. So one of the big ones I mentioned was the Strong National Museum of Play. Um, you know, they do things like they announce the um, the Video Game Hall of Fame, the, the games that they're putting in the Video Game Hall of Fame, and that has national draw. Um, a lot of the things, um, the International um, Center for uh, History of Electronic Games does, has national draw. So, so leveraging uh, an asset like that that's here in Rochester in our backyard is super important. Um, just this past fall, they had they opened their Women in Games uh, exhibit and had uh, an incredible panel of um, uh, women developers from the industry. Um, and we got the opportunity to not only talk to them but also host them here at Magic and have them talk to our students and members of our community. Um, and that, that's that's a big thing. That's not uh, uh, something that everybody can have access to all the time. So uh, leveraging things like the Strong, um, our local uh, game studios, um, and all the work that they do, um, they're always willing to step out of the studio and help us with uh, our efforts. But also just the, the concentration of, of work that's being done here on campus as well as in the city, um, just trying to bring that together and push that narrative that, that we're making games. Uh, you know, sometimes people aren't aware of that. The general public isn't aware of uh, that game development is number one, uh, an industry you can go into, and number two, that it's happening here in Rochester. So leveraging those assets we have, the studios, the strong, um, things like that, really kind of help get that message across. Thank you. All right, so the next question is for Dylan again. What else is going on with games in New York City? What are the main communities, companies, groups in the area? Well, it's a big city, um, so there's a bunch of stuff uh, going on. Um, I think that um, there's a couple of places to look that are, are really exciting. So one would be um, an organization called Baby Castles. So this is a, um, uh, I always struggle to describe them. It's a, it's a collective, an artist collective that is essentially really pushing the, the, the edges of what games are. I think that um, it's important for uh, institutions, uh, colleges, and, and art artistic places to really question what it is that we're doing and to say, well, um, is it a game if it doesn't have points? Or is it a game if it's not on a screen? Or if you're not using a controller? Or if it's made by different people than you expect or played by different people than you expect? And so I think an organization like Baby Castles um, like they their genesis story is that two people who just really got excited about the the, the potential of games uh i i kid you not walked both ways uh in the snow uh like about a decade ago or more um through brooklyn to queens to bring um these laptop computers to a show like to a to a punk show um and just while people were standing in line they were playing these games out of their backpacks and um i think they've kind of taken that taken that ethos and just continued to do that of like of really kind of pushing the edges of what it could be. So it's it's less um, commercial than than what we've been talking about, but I think that it's really important part of the ecosystem to have people like Baby Castles um, around and, and contributing to the conversation. Um, there's a similar uh, organization that's more focused just on um, uh, more social events, which is created through, um, they make new arcade cabinets. So what you, you know, may expect from Donkey Kong or Pong or something like that, um, they'll br make brand new cabinets and put different games in them and bring them to events and venues and bars and, and again do that thing of kind of um, here are some new games that you might not expect and, and, uh, and reinvigorate the interest in the, in the industry. So um, I think that's uh, folks like that are there. There's an organization called Playcrafting that's doing a, a bunch of, um, of, of classes. So if you don't want to get a full degree in, in games, you can go take some classes with, with Playcrafting. Um, and um, I think I don't want to take up too much of the conversation, so I'll just say if you we the game center's Twitter account and our um, our social media and our website really does try to surface stuff that's happening outside of our institution. So if you're curious to hear more about that, then then follow us and and see what we're 
talking about and you'll you'll pretty quickly get a sense of what the, the terrain is like here. Thanks. All right, so I have a question for anyone to chime in on. Um, and here it is. It says, I'm the founder of Cove Haptics, a SUNY sponsored startup that offers innovative game controllers for many different types of game based applications. How could I introduce our technology to your game development game developers and collaborate with faculty and students? Um, well, I, I guess I can answer this, and this is probably the answer that most people would have, is definitely get in touch with us. Um, uh, the slides, hopefully you were able to capture our emails or you can look up our websites. Um, we would, I mean, I know RPI would definitely love to get in touch with with you about um, alternative controllers. It's definitely something that our students are excited about and work with frequently. So, yeah. Yeah, this is Rob. This is Rob. Uh, I'll definitely chime in and, and say the same. Um, that's something our students uh, have been expressing interest in, as well as our community, uh, quite quite a bit, um, especially with you know the recent release of the uh, Xbox uh, accessibility controller. Um, so yeah, please reach out. We'd uh, love to check that out. I didn't catch where you're you're from, but I guess this is a, a general note to, to everyone too. Is the Game Center has an event called Playtest Thursday. So every Thursday from five to seven, um, we open up our doors and anyone is invited with to to come and and show your project. So that could be anything from an idea that you came up with on the subway on the way here to a game you're about to launch on Switch on Thursday. Um, you bring your project. It's very informal. You get a table. And um, the idea is that you give as much feedback as you get. And we, we try to kind of um, crowdsource improvements um, and, uh, from, the, from the community. So anyone's welcome to do that. And also, if you play test someone's game, then you get free pizza. So um, that's a good draw for, for the students. And it, uh, it makes sure that it's, it's, it's really well attended. So yourself or anyone else who's out there who has a project, who's in our area, play test Thursday, every Thursday, 5 to 7. You're welcome to come check it out. Thanks, Rob. And I just wanted to let you know, Cove Haptics is based in Boston. All right, so the next question I have is for Amanda. Um, it says, what does the game ecosystem look like in the capital region? Uh, the game ecosystem in our region is uh, fairly varied. Um, we're located rather conveniently halfway between New York, Boston, and Montreal. Um, we have a, a bunch of larger game studios. Um, we have Vicarious Visions, which is an Activision company. We have um, WB Games, um, uh, and we have uh, PUBG Mad Glory. Um, we also have some smaller studios. We have First Playable Productions. Um, we have a fair number of startups that are in the area. We have a fair number of uh, VR companies. Um, as far as more community focused um, groups, we have uh, the Tech Valley Game Space, which I had mentioned. Um, we have a local IGDA chapter. Um, we have a bunch of other, um, like, I guess, indies and uh, um, community based uh, people in our area. So it, it's surprisingly, um, it's a surprisingly well-developed ecosystem. I think one thing that people don't think about is that um, like PUBG Med Glory is up in Clifton Park or Saratoga and that's about you know 40 minutes away from Albany um, which seems long but I mean if you think of it compared to um, you know a regular traffic commute in a, in a metropolitan area it's, it's about similar so uh, it's really great um, that we're able to have such a you know robust community. Um, thank you. Thanks, Amanda. So I have another question for anyone to chime in on, and it reads, if I have an idea about a game which involves a new technology like AR, how do I go about it? Do I, can I just give it to someone and have it developed? Um, hey, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no. All right, go for a wrap. No, I was going to say, um, I guess my question would be, is it, is it simply just the idea, or do you have experience with programming or any of the art? Um, um, typically, uh, m most people, um, I'd say, kind of, kind of hit the ground running on their own. Uh, you know, dive into to learning the programming, or at least learning the art. Um, it's a little bit easier to get by in if you have something to show. Um, 
it's simply an idea, you know, I'm going to say isn't always enough. Um, you know, a lot of game developers themselves have ideas. Um, that said, there's a lot of AR technologies out there and it's, it is becoming more accessible. Um, game development itself is becoming more accessible. Um, so that's something that you can, you can definitely look into on your own um, and, and see and at least kind of develop a prototype to at least showcase and uh, kind of get people to, to buy into it. Okay, thank you. So I have one more question. And it's, um, how do the various gaming hubs around New York State collaborate with each other? Well, I can take that one. So we, uh, a bunch of, a bunch of ways and, and increasingly so. So we've been, we've been hubbed up now for, um, for three years and, um, we, so I think there's a couple of things we do. One is that, um, we are planning on, um, kind of unifying, um, and this is, this is, uh, in progress. So as a, after, after these digital gaming hub programs that got us going, um, we're going to be moving into the Center of Excellence program, which comes with additional um, funding and also additional responsibility. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing is, is figuring out how to unify our um, our event series and also our our kind of our branding so that when someone wants to, you know, an event like this, for example, people are out there, they might be interested in developing an AR project or they have um, son or daughter that's interested in school or they're just love playing games they want to see what it's all about being able to go to a unified place and say what what's out there for me and really just collecting what's already happening in new york because um there's just there's just a lot going on and uh the folks doing it are, are busy doing what they're doing so we're trying to find a way to um collect that in one place and and, and kind of just talk to each other and put that out into the world in a, in a more clear and and cohesive way um there's also a um there's a big conference in California called GDC, which is our industry's basically the largest conference. And so um, we're talking about um, getting together there and having a little bit more of a unified presence, perhaps. Um, and uh, well, I don't know. Let's see. What, what Amanda and, and Rob? What else? What else do we do? Uh, the um, wow, the uh, game challenge the new york state game dev challenge we've been doing that for three years um so people from around the country or around the state can uh submit their games or this is from the past three years um, i don't think we're doing one this year um but they would submit their games um and they would have they would be judged and there would be three student winners and three um new york state winners and they would receive mentorship and an award ceremony and um Many of those projects have gone on to be um, at least commercially shipped. I don't know how um, Rob might be able to speak more about their success. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mentioned Esthetician Labs, the student team. They were the student winners. Uh, they took first place uh, 2018. Um, but some of the games, um, one, the team that took first place in 2017 uh, launched a successful Kickstarter last year. Um, their game is called uh, Genesis Noir. They're based out of New York City, I believe. And, um, you know, it, it's great to see these teams continue doing their work and, you know, also talk about the value that the game hubs and the, the New York State Game Dev Challenge added to all that. Um, but, I mean, in, in addition to that, as hubs, we also just, you know, we just talk to one another and share what works uh, and what doesn't work. And, you know, there is there's differences between regions, but just being able to, to, to ping somebody else and be like, hey, we ran this event, it didn't go well, any ideas why, or um, look what's working in our region, maybe that'll work for you too. Um, those things are incredibly valuable. You know, this, this uh, uh, task of, of economic development and supporting your industry um, can be tricky. Um, it's a lot of fun, but it can definitely be tricky. So it's, it's always helpful to have some, um, some, some friends to talk to you about that. Awesome, thanks guys. All right, so I have one more question for everyone. And it reads, are your incubator programs open to interactive experiences outside of games, such as training simulators, interactive films and interactive films and so on? Um, our uh, co-op program for the students uh, is, it is open to 
uh, interactive experiences. Um, as I mentioned, we're hosting uh, or we're supporting a uh, illustrator this um, semester who's working on a, a full comic book. Um, and we've done um, other interactive and educational projects in the past. One of them was a um, uh, an app that taught uh, children's uh, or children uh, language, uh, various languages. Um, it wasn't so much a game as it was more educational. So yeah, it's definitely something we're hoping to hear with, specifically with our, our student co-op program. Uh, yeah, here at the, the Game Center, I think our focus is definitely on, um, on games, but we also take a pretty wide definition of what that means. So, um, you know, you saw the Rewardable Project, which is, which is a, a board game. We've had um, games for phones and for consoles and that kind of thing. I think that we're definitely open to, you know, our application is free and it's, it's meant to be, you know, not a, nothing that you wouldn't already be doing if you were going to be starting a company with this project in the first place. Um, so when the application is open, which will be quite soon, uh, within the next uh, week or so, um, then you're welcome to uh, to get in touch with us. We'll have a, a, an info session just about our incubator in the next couple of weeks that you could attend. Um, I, like I said, we, we generally focus more on games, um, but the because that's the, what the expertise that we have to help with is. But um, but we are we're open to exploring what that could mean. So um, so if you're interested, yeah, just keep your eyes on the the Game Center incubator and and come to the info session. We can we can answer your questions there. Uh, for RPI, the uh, reveal program um, was open to um, pretty much anyone entrepreneurial uh, when it was started. So there was uh, like engineering and um, other tech type ideas. Uh, for the specific um, game focused one, um, we definitely had, we had one project that was uh, doing a gamified um, geolocation based security app. So it wasn't um, what people would generically consider to be a game, but because it had the same principles and requirements that most of these games would have, um, they qualified. So it's definitely, um, when, when we have more information about what we're gonna be doing this year, um, I would definitely sign on applying regardless of what your idea is. Can't hurt. Alrighty, so I just have two more questions. And the next one is, what challenges have you faced or do you face in your efforts in growing the industry and communities? Yeah, um, I think one of the things is, is I mentioned uh, that narrative that we kind of have to push about making games. It's just sometimes people aren't aware that this is an, uh, an industry that you can uh, get into or that it's an industry that exists here in Rochester or, or New York. Um, so sometimes breaking down that barrier. Um, another one we see, you know, is often the discussion of the difference between playing games versus making games. Uh, they are they are very different things. Um, and while an enjoyment of of playing games helps, um, you know, making games is is definitely a, a lengthy and it takes a while and it can be um, somewhat of a trial sometimes. But it it is enjoyable and people do do like it. But those are the conversations that um, you know we we tend to have with uh, um, our local constituents as well as the city, um, city government. But um, just kind of getting them to understand and you know help push that narrative that this is an industry, this is something that we are uh, working on, and you know we have an excellent school here in Rochester as well as other schools here and hubs here in New York. Um, just kind of getting people on board with that and, and aware of how to talk about it. That it isn't just gaming, it's, it's game development, it's, you know, interactive experiences. Awesome, thank you. All right, and the last question is for Dylan. It um, reads, when do applications to the incubator start and who should apply? <sighs> That's a good question. Um, I, looking, over my shoulder of my to-do list, I will tell you the answer is very soon. Uh, they are going to open, uh, like within the next two weeks, um, maybe even sooner than that. And um, who should apply? I mean, what we're looking for, I think 
the best thing to do is, is to is to reach out to us directly and, and to and to have a longer conversation because it really is a, a quite a commitment. So if you're going to not just the three months uh, working on the project, but the opportunity cost to do that and um, and the work that's going to be required after that. Um, so we're we're really trying to help people start careers making games. And um, and so what we're looking for is folks that have a project that is sufficiently developed that they can they can work on the business aspect of it, that they're kind of ready and willing to do this, that they've explored the, the possibilities. Um, and um, they're just in a place where we can we can help them. Really, that's that's ultimately um, this is a, a public benefit. Um, so we want to know that it's the best we can is to work with applicants to say, um, can we benefit you? So um, there's a, there's a lot of different ways that that can that can look uh, because there's a lot of different ways to make games. So um, like I said, just just our, our social media or uh, gamecenter.nyu.edu backslash follow and pick your favorite flavor on there. And uh, we will definitely be making noise when the incubator application opens. We're going to have an info session um, in the uh, later on in this month. And uh, you can always write to us once you have a little more information and we can we can answer your questions from there. Thank you. All right, so if you're a manufacturer or startup seeking, seeking assistance, please contact FuseHub. Um, we respond directly to all company requests within 40, 24 to 48 hours, and you can submit a request for assistance directly on FuseHub's website at fusehub.com forward slash manufacturer solutions. And I just want to say again, thank you to all of our presenters, and thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.